Hi friends, it's your girl Lee here. Happy to join you tonight. Thanks so much for watching and tuning in with me. Um, a lot of people, if you're on the East Coast, such as myself, are freezing. It is so bitter outside. So everybody's Netflix and a chillin'. Um, and I just wanted to say that a lot of people reaching out saying, do you have any recommendations? You always have some good picks for us. And things that they may not have discovered on Netflix. And there's one that I haven't heard a lot of buzz about. And every time I mention it to people, I, I just get very hype. I love this movie. There's something about it, so please like, comment, dislike, whatever your thoughts are if you have seen it, or if I maybe recommended it and inspired you to see it, please let me know, I would love that. So if you're in this weekend cold, or if you're somewhere warm and cozy, which I hope you are, please check it out. I, I definitely always, always like to recommend films that I think are at least a great investment of your time, because that's what's important. So it's a film called I Came By. I Came By was released I was working a film event, so I'm going to say like August, end of August 2022. Um, not a lot of hype around it, but I thought it was fantastic. It's woke as hell. It's timely, but I don't think that in time it will lose that um, urgency, that effect. It's things that we're dealing with, sadly, in our environment today. It's a thriller, so it's shocking. Uh, I like the pace the urgency of it. I mean, that's what you need in a thriller. There are a couple of jump starts where I, obviously, the audience, we know what's going to happen, and I still screamed at the top of my lungs at one. I just I screamed the F word because it wasn't scary, like horrifying. It's scary, like, damn it, you, I, I can't believe, you got to be kidding me. So it's one of those that even though you know it's coming, you're like, hmm. And I think that's because the character development is so amazing. Um, this is a film by Babak Anvari. Babek um, worked with the Sundance organization, and when you see that, you're not surprised because this film, to me, in my opinion, cinematically speaking, I think is maybe one, two rewrites away from being a phenomenal screenplay, being an absolute masterpiece. This film, no matter what, is a gem. Uh, it starts out with the character Toby, played by um, George McRae. George McRae, you probably would know him from 1917, and he's a fantastic actor. And that's the thing, the, the acting, the ensemble cast is brilliant. Um, Hugh Bonneville, who doesn't love him from Downton Abbey, and he is certainly get you know keeping his stately appearance uh, in this film, but boy, does he have a meaty role. He, he must have loved this. I would love to interview him and specifically ask him about this character in this role. Um, He's tremendous. He's everything you want him to be in this and certainly most definitely separates himself from his role on Downton Abbey. And then you have the fantastic Kelly McDonald. She never disappoints. She's a phenomenal actress. Um, I think the dynamic between her and Toby, and as you know, I never, ever, ever give an ending away. So to be careful and cautious, this is a thriller where it's, the thing is it's not just scary. Um, it's so heartfelt and I think that's where it gets you. This screenplay is wonderful. The character development is excellent. Let's say I stopped the film, you know, quite a few moments in, maybe, maybe half an hour or so, I'd be able to ask you about Toby, the main character, and you could tell me exactly who he is. He's a graffiti artist and this is what he believes or does not believe in. It's tremendous. So the character development all the way throughout was wonderful. The characters stayed true to themselves all the way throughout, and a lot of these films consider them indie or art house. They don't do that. Um, we love the arc of a character when it changes. Obviously, there's some catalyst that moves them along and propels the story and their dialogue and their possible change of heart, but it's always best when someone stays true, as true to the essence of that character as humanly possible, does it. Soundtrack, um, you'll see why. This one song in particular was chosen because um, I'm certain Babak really wanted to maintain that class system that uh, he's really, really focusing on in this and, you know, shedding a major light upon. Uh, Kelly, she's tremendous in her role, not to say too much or give it away, but just brilliant. Um, and of course, um, Purcell Ascot. Wow, I mean, for ensemble, I hope they would have won any award that could have been offered them because this is fantastic. So I feel like all the elements were there. Um, the photography is amazing. Um, the cinematography. There are only, like I said, a few things that just glaringly stood out for me that most likely were cut in the editing process. Where I was like, "Ooh, they they focused on that for a reason, even for a split second, but they didn't showcase it. Didn't really have that culmination at the end." So. 
you know me, I give my own reviews. I don't read about things, even on Netflix. I'm like, boop, don't wanna know the description. Let me figure it out for myself and give my best um, review. And a lot of them, frankly, weren't that great. I felt completely different. I always worry at the ending, of course, never give anything away that it's gonna, the ball's gonna be dropped. Something's gonna happen, I'm like, they could, they could have wrapped it in a most beautiful bow. This would have been excellent. Why didn't they do that? This is why I need to be an executive producer. Like this didn't happen, this one did. Because there were a few elements that I was like, if they don't do X by the end of this Y piece, I'll be furious. And they didn't, the really, and that's how I knew it was a Sundance um, Institute film because you know that it's studied, it's curated and calculated every single line, word, piece. So I think that so much heart and soul went into this, and that's the thing, it's a little deeper than just a you know, little thrilogy. Um, there's family elements that really tie all the characters together. It's heartfelt, scary, woke, um, very, very well done. I think the pacing is excellent because it really could have gotten lost in a lot of current events pieces that they didn't need to, so I'm glad that they went back and edited some of that out. Uh, I think you're gonna love it. I hope that you love it. I, I have to go high with this, and seeing some of the reviews, um, they weren't so great, but I felt, for me personally, and that's why I'm dying to hear what you have to say, I thought it was wonderful. I mean, it's certainly sad. I don't mean the ending sad. I'm not giving anything away. I just mean overall, it's you know a palpable sadness. It's just like a pallor over the film because of what the subject matter is. That's just for that but they made it slick, sharp, really enjoyed it. Kind of a heist film, kind of a, you know, commentary on what the world is today. So um, I hope that you love it. Please, please tell me what you think. I came by um, a wonderful gem of a film by Babak Anvari. I really hope you like it. Please let me know. I think I might watch it again because uh, it's amazing. So in one of my shorts uh, to introduce it, I'll tell you what, what song at some point I would have maybe played to lead it out. But let me know your thoughts. I hope you love it. At least you'll enjoy the acting. It's a quality, top notch, the best that you can get. So have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon and come see me again.